controlling the shadows, mastering the shadows, finding the shadows. Uh, slot canyons down in Arizona and Utah are great for this as the light comes in and kind of wraps around. Shadows create depth, they show the texture. Also very nice up on the sand dunes. Hoping to get some nice sand dunes in Morocco. And so these little ripples in the sand would not be visible without the shadows. That creates the depth and the texture. And so wanting to be at the dunes at the right time of day so that the sun is low enough so that you can see the shadows properly. This is, this is the deserts down and some sand dunes down in Death Valley. And the tulip fields. These shadows, just that little shadow in the back and the shadow in the front. When we get to section 10, I'm going to show you the bad photos that led up to this. And so kind of the process of finding this shot. So probably the most important thing that you can do in controlling light is when you shoot your pictures, thinking about the time of the day. When we were down in Baja, California, there was this rock that was really unusual because it was a big rock and you could get inside and shoot outside of it. It was like a Fred Flintstone car, okay? And you could shoot through and see the desert out to the sides and you're using the rock as a framing. And I was kind of playing around with different angles and I end up kind of liking this general composition. And this rock, which you could see out both sides, allowed you a lot of ways to, to work around. I came back, I wasn't really satisfied because the contrast level between dark and bright was just too much. So I came back the next morning and it was more even lighting and I played around with a number of different places and I ended up back at this, really liked that composition, but it just didn't have any, it didn't have a punch to it. And so about an hour later I came back and it had just the right mix of light and shadows. Some nice colored lights, some shadows, but I could still see details in there. And even though I've been shooting for many, many years, I didn't know that this was what it was gonna look like. I had to go back and I had to view it with my own eyes. And so in a lot of cases, you kind of scout out a good location and you have to go back again and again and again. And that's why when you travel, you need to have time to go shoot these sorts of things. We were just talking about the shot of the library. And so this is what it looks like in the middle on a cloudy day. Come back on a sunny day, we have a lot more contrast. We stick around to the evenings. And this is kind of an awkward time of the evening. It's still kind of bright in the sky and the lights of the building and everything else around haven't really come up in comparison to where all the other lights are. But if we just kind of hang around for a little bit, it slowly transforms into a more even lighting level. And what's going on here is that the ambient light level is coming down and the artificial light level is staying in one place and it's when they kind of match up and meet is when you want to shoot. And so top left we're at 738 and notice how quickly it's just 20 minutes from really kind of garbage light to something that's much much better has a lot more color and oomph to it. So being in the right spot having that time to shoot is very important. And it's kind of fun to kind of play around with your own subjects. Going back to the same location and shooting it under different types of light, you will definitely learn about light. 